Hey everyone, the name's Eric Dorr and I think that there is a whole world in Neo Jungian psychology that has been undiscussed so far. That is how intuition and judging, for example, can impact intuition and perceiving. How does introverted intuition, as it's popularly known, impact extroverted intuition? What is the interaction between these two? Often we describe these two as opposites and we often are led to believe that the opposites, they are opposites in values or in needs, when often the case is that their needs are exactly the same, but their temperament or their way of engaging and exploring these needs are different. And really for me, intuition and judging is a question of your path, my path, how I move forward in life, what my sense of direction is, how I want to reach my passion and my explore my interests. And uh, it's in many ways the case that intuition and judging is like uh, <laughs> wizard's play in a sense. That it's about organizing uh, ideas, it's about testing the likelihood of ideas and coming up with rules on how you should explore ideas and how you should navigate ideas and what you should do with them. Coming up with systems for ideas to place ideas into, to understand them according to each other and how they interact. The intuitive and perceiving way is in many ways counter to this because uh, there is no need to organize ideas for an intuitive perceiving type. The goal is instead to apply the ideas and to use them in each particular moment. And often this is something missed in extrovert intuition definitions. That extrovert intuition is always about being able to apply an idea to understand external events. Where often the extrovert intuitive is adept at abstracting on reality and going, uh, okay, so this is how we can understand these patterns, or this idea or this possibility can be used to understand this present situation. Often the intuitive perceiving type is always able to do in the moment what the intuitive judging type plans and enforces more rigor rigorously. Often there is the question of linearity in play between intuition and judging, where intuition and judging is a linear process in the sense that it follows certain rules in a certain path. Often the path is of course unknown to the intuitive, but uh, there is a path regardless for the intuitive judging type. It's often something subtle that you're moving towards. I tend to... Uh, I found recently that a good uh, definition of how intuition and judging moves is as a spiral upwards. Often the intuitive judging type is constantly building up their idea, constantly uh, adding layers to it to, in ways, give it spin. Intuitive judging types are always giving spin to ideas and that's often how intuition and judging types can influence intuitive perceivers. What we can do is take the ideas often brought up by the intuitive perceivers and we can give them spin. And this is also where our creativity comes up. We take these ideas and we try to fit them in a system and we try to judge how likely these possibilities are. If they're unlikely, we rule them out. If they're likely, uh, we put them into action, we put them into play. And we try to put them in a system and the system is used to determine its likeliness. If the idea fits with your existing system of ideas, if it adds to and gives new perspective to it, then it becomes an integral part of the intuitive judging type's vision. It becomes a part of uh, how we move, how we act, how we shape our thoughts and how we shape our thinking and how we explore new information. And it plays a crucial role in our creativity. Truly, synthesis is a core part of the intuitive judging process. It's uh, the synthesis of the ideas that the intuitive perceiving is constantly bringing up. Often uh, what is brought up about the introverted intuition is that it is hard to apply in reality and it's hard to understand. And that's the case, that's true, it's true, it's very true. Intuitive judging types may have theories that are sometimes hard and impractical in each moment. Okay, but how do I use this idea or this vision to understand my present life situation? Intuitive judging types can have so many theories that lack practical application. And here is where extrovert intuition can help. 
extract intuition can in many ways uh, pick up these systems and these visions and they can say, oh, let's do this with it. And often for the intuitive judging type, it's that how can you even do that? What? Did you just take that idea and did you just put it like that? But does that even work? Often it's the case for the intuitive judging type that you must know what you're doing before you do it. It's that uh, we, we, we think that uh, there are rules to how we can use ideas and how to uh, enforce them. Uh, but often intuitive perceivers show us that this is not the case. Often an idea or a possibility can always, always has potential in each moment to be used to do something. Um, there is no right time or place for an idea. An idea's time is always right now. That's probably what intuitive perceiving does. So often functional chemistry is so interesting, how functions interact and how they move each other. And I found that with intuition and perceiving and intuition and judging, it's so often that uh, intuition and perceiving, intuition and judging is integrating one another into each other's. The intuitive perceiving type can simply pick up the ideas and systems that the intuitive judging type has put in play and they can go, oh, let's put it there and there and there and let's do that and that and that with it. Uh, and the intuitive judger goes, how did you do that? And that's just the intuitive perceiving integration process. The intuitive judging type can take the ideas that the intuitive perceiving type has found or spotted the possible events and they can say, oh, that one is going to work and that one is not going to work. And the intuitive perceiving type will go, how did you know that? How do you know that? <laughs> like, where did that come from? That, how, do you, how do you determine the accuracy of these ideas? How do you determine which one's more likely than the other? Because that's often a foreign thing to an intuitive perceiving type. The intuitive perceiving type does not think in terms of likeliness, it thinks in terms of possibility. And all options are considered, both the likely ones and the unlikely ones. So the integration process here is to venture into the other person's domain and to take it and use it for your intuitive perceiving means. And uh, often in this venturing process there are some problems, yes. The main problem is stress. Going into this system, initially, uh, for the intuitive perceiving type can seem stressful. It can seem like an annoying, tedious process. It seems like unnecessary. Why are all these rules here? Why are all these tables here? Why are all these categories here? Well, what the, what's it's the purpose of these uh, nitical, narrow, linear thoughts? But you can at any given moment put chaos into the equations uh, that the intuitive judging types have brought up. You can at any moment take out and play with anything used there. It's like a cookbook full of recipes and you don't have to follow the recipes. All you have to do is go in there, start reading and start finding and uh, using the ideas as you see fit. And when you get over that stress, because this is healthy stress, that's also where you get inspiration. Integration is all about inspiration. It's all about that sense of, yes, I got it. Yes, I got into something new. Because through this, on your own, with just your normal function, it's often, it's often incomplete. And we keep spinning and we keep working on and we keep adding to that equation. I keep going in that spiral, but I never reach anything complete. That's the issue of intuitive judging in itself. And sometimes to complete this process, I go into, uh, of course, sensing, perceiving. I go into extroverted sensing, but that does not complete the process. And that's the interesting thing. People talk about how you, as an introverted intuitive, needs to go into extroverted sensing to finish your idea and to prove it in reality. But that's not the case at all. What introvert intuition's core goal is, is to predict the future. What extroverted sensing can do is only predict the present. So going into extroverted sensing, you can't find any evidence that your ideas, your speculations, your uh, theories are valid. All you can find is data in reality that can add to your speculations. These present patterns can probably indicate this. If you need to know the future, then you need patterns. And that is the domain of intuition and perceiving. If you want to get a grasp about the... If you want to go from the spiral into actually applicable present 
solutions, then you need intuitive perceiving. Because that's all the only place where you can find your ideas useful, uh, made to actually give something to people, made to actually uh, spark something in others, made to actually in every situation provide something useful, a new solution or a perspective on each new pattern, each new possibility, a judgment of the likelihood of each new eventuality. That's the core goal of intuition and judging. And that's how integration works. Integration is the process of completing a process so that you can move on to the next one. The grounding process, founding, sensing and perceiving, the goal of that one is simply to correct and to add references to your existing theories. But it's not about proving your theories. So finally that leaves one question. What's the goal? How do... How does intuition and judging impact sensing and judging? What's the core goal there? And what I found is that sensing and judging pacifies intuition and judging. Sensing and judging settles and makes the intuitive judging type go, oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> it stops, stops all speculation dead in its tracks. It uh, ends the process of uh, envisioning and uh, theorizing and systemizing ideas. Because the known just goes, here it is. And that's the truly numbing process for the intuitive judging type. It doesn't complete what you did, it simply stops it dead in its tracks. Sensing and perceiving, it doesn't stop you dead in its tracks, but it slows you down, it weighs down on you. Uh, you keep putting these rules and it uh, truly, <laughs> what I've found is that Intuitive judging types in the grip of extroverted sensing only become more narrow-minded and more obsessive and compulsive than the intuitive judging types that don't find themselves slaves to the reality. So this is something I think everyone should think about. Uh, your cognitive function is always impacted in four particular ways. Integration, which is the completion of a process or a theory or a speculation. Grounding, which is the correction and grounding and balancing of theory. And balancing, which is the weighing and comparing of uh, two people of similar types, where they look at each other's and they look at each other's process and they balance each other's and add to each other's. And finally, pacifying is how you go into an autopilot and how you stop yourself if you are going too far into something or if something is just becoming endless speculation for no reason at all. I hope you all enjoyed this video and if you did leave a like, share and subscribe and as always have a nice day.